marker. They have to catch Key to Content. Key to Content has a three parts of a length of Burke right alongside in second. And there goes the Philly. Uh, Madam Gay charging through along the rail third. Match the hat dropping back in for John Henry. Uh, scoots through along the rail now. Fifth Super Moment out there. Six and Rossi Gold is also on the move. Uh, around the fire turn they go. Uh, the Burke racing strongly on the outside. Puts his head in front. Key to Content down along the rail, second by three, Madam Gay. Losing ground now in third, match the hatch in fourth. John Henry and Rossi Gold, here they come, spinning out of the turn. The Burt has it now by two lengths. Madam Gay driving strongly in second. Key to Content comes back along the rail. Here's John Henry closing ground, followed by match the hatch. The Burt under a heavy whip. John Henry is charging. John Henry on the outside. The Burt down along the rail, Madam Gay. The Burt digs in under the whip, and the final move by John Henry. The Burt is still there. Can't split him, but Bart, or is it John Henry on the outside? We know Madam Gay was third. Awfully close. The Bart clinging tenaciously along the rail. John Henry running strongly on the outside. This one can go either way. Welcome to another edition of Horse Center, everyone. I am Brian Zipsy, and as always, I have the great pleasure of being joined by my co-host to the East Coast. That's Matt Schiffman. Matt, we just heard Phil George F, the legendary Phil George F, John Henry and the Bard. We sure did, Brian. It's a little bit of a sad show, I guess, on Horse Center. We make our annual visit to Arlington Park every summer for the big uh, uh, series of turf races anchored by the Arlington Million. But Brian, it looks like this is going to be the last time. And... Uh, at least I can say that I did get to visit Arlington Park once and enjoy its majesty. It wasn't for the big weekend of racing, but but I must say that I was so taken by that racetrack. I'll let you talk a little bit more because I know you spent so much time in the Chicago area and went to so many of those big races. Yeah, absolutely, Matt. It is, it is kind of a sad show, folks. If you don't know, this looks to be the end of Arlington Park, it, Arlington International Racecourse as we know it. Uh, there's still some question marks as what exactly will happen, but it, it sure looks like Churchill Downs Incorporated, which bought uh, Arlington Park about 20 years ago, Matt, is, is kind of uh, doing what they've done to other great racetracks. They're putting an end to it. They're selling it. And they have other thoughts and interests other than keeping this great race place open. For my money, Matt, it's the best facility in American racing. I'm just talking about the grounds, the, uh, the building itself. Of course, it burned down many years ago. I was at the old Arlington Park. I still remember the old Arlington Park. Uh, horses, Matt, like Citation and Secretary. Of course, who can forget Dr. Figure's incredible weight carrying mile to set the world record in the Washington Park handicap. This, this racetrack is filled with nostalgia, but when they uh, rebuilt it after the fire of 1985. It came back bigger, more beautiful, better than ever. And uh, I, I, I'm not uh, blowing smoke when I say I really do believe it's the best facility in American racing. So, 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 so sorry to see it go. And of course, all this great turf, Matt. John Henry ran in this race three times. And of course, what we saw to open the show, Matt, was the very first one. John Henry won two. He finished second in a third but it was the first one where uh, against all odds, that's the statue, the bronze statue that uh, is uh, very uh, uh, noticeable as you walk into Arlington Park is of John Henry and the Bard. It looked like all the world that the Bard had held on, but of course the great John Henry got him there, Matt. So many good Arlington millions over the years. Yeah, absolutely, Brian, you know, and, and we talk about racing and the survival of racing, um, you know, it, regrettably, it, it seems to be that this is the, 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 the path of horse racing, horse racing will go on, but these kind of racetracks, these smaller than Saratoga, smaller than Belmont uh, racetracks are the ones that are in danger of slipping away. Yeah, slipping away, and it's a shame. It's a shame. I remember uh, horses, I, Manila was probably the, the greatest million winner as, as far as I was concerned. John Henry, of course, right up there, but Manila, I don't know if anybody would have beaten Manila on the turf there. Paradise Creek, Gio Ponte, more recently, the Pizza Man, and of course, just the uh, two seasons ago, Bricks and Water on his way to a horse of the year. So 
Arlington Million, the Beverly D, the Secretariat, that most of them have different names now, Matt. But this is a big weekend of turf racing, as you alluded to. You got the four-star Dave, grade one, four-star Dave at Saratoga. We're going to focus on Arlington Park, the last edition of these races, Matt. The Pucker Up, the Bruce D are for three-year-olds, but we're going to focus on the two big ones. We're going to start with the Mr. D, Matt, that, of course, had for all these years been the Budweiser Million or the Budweiser Arlington Million or for the longest time, just the Arlington Million. Now it's named the Mr. D after, of course, it's a uh, it longtime owner, uh, uh, Dick Duchessois. 10 for a long, 600,000 this year, Matt, but I think it attracted the best American turf horse going domestic spending. Yes, Brian, it sure did. Uh, um, domestic spending, Chad Brown, who uh, uh, has uh, certainly enjoyed his visits to uh, Chicago and Arlington Park in recent years, winning those races that you mentioned in, in, in piles, but domestic spending on a four race win streak, which includes three grade ones, the winner of six out of seven uh, uh, races, domestic spending, I think right now clearly the best turf horse in America, and, and at this point, a viable candidate for a horse of the year. Sure. I think there are some other really good candidates for horse of the year this year within the three-year-old division, within the older dirt male division, and even the older dirt female division. So domestic spending uh, is in that race, but he's got to do a little bit more, Matt, because only two races so far this year, but they were two big wins, as you said. Yeah, he's on a four race winning streak. He's won three straight grade one races, two for two this year. And I think last time in the Manhattan, where he just blew by the field down the stretch, the son of Kingman, the four year old son of Kingman looked superior to anything that we've seen on American turf, maybe since bricks and mortar two years ago. And, and Matt, I, 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 after the Manhattan, you could even wonder if he could be even better than bricks and mortar, who actually won the last Arlington million two years ago. Yeah, I feel that way too, Brian, because uh, especially with that last race you mentioned from dom domestic spending, um, there was no doubt that, that he was going to be the winner and, and such, a, such a turn of foot uh, you knew coming down the stretch that he was going to blow by with bricks and mortar. There was a little bit more drama coming down the stretch about whether he was going to get up to win. Yeah, and, and that's true uh, for domestic spending too in a lot of his races, Matt, uh, but the Manhattan kind of blew the doors off the field he did and also kind of raised him to another level. Consequently, Matt, I think in this 10-horse field we have for the Mr. D, I think you're going to see a very, very heavy favorite. Uh, I lose them to even money. I think the morning line came out and they have him at six to five. Frankly, I think he'll be lower than both of those lines. I think we might see, even though it's a 10-horse field, I think we might see something like three to five on Saturday at Arlington. Yeah, I can't argue with that, Brian. He sure looks like he stands way over this field. Stands way over the field, but I want to mention, I want to talk a little bit about the, uh, the Aiden O'Brien uh, shipper uh, ridden by Ryan Moore. We've seen this combination come to America and enjoy a lot of success. They've enjoyed success at Arlington Park as well. Aiden O'Brien knows how to bring these horses to the Arlington International Racecourse and win. And in the Sun of Galileo, I, you know, I, I think if you just look at the past performances real quick, you were saying, well, he wins, he wins here and there. He's won a couple group teams in Europe. But a closer look reveals some stuff, Matt. A, a, he's been racing literally against the best horses in European racing, and he's been very competitive. He's been bet over there in some of these big races. He also made a trip last year to Australia and ran a very big race uh, uh, succumbing late in the Cox Plate succumbing late in the cox plate in australia so he's traveled before this is a horse of class i think if anybody can beat domestic spending armory looks like the horse to me right brian he is a horse of class obviously he travels well go, going all over the place to america to australia and, and like you said you look and see his last race was a fourth place in a group two before that it was third in a group one but yeah that third was uh in was at royal ascot in in one of the the 
the signature races at Royal Ascot against the uh, fantastic field. The same thing for that uh, group two uh, where uh, he ran fourth and had a win in a group two also. He's a very good veteran horse for Aiden O'Brien. Yeah, and, and I think a mile and a quarter is right up the alley of domestic spending, but I also think a mile and a quarter is proven to be right up the alley of this horse from O'Brien, this son of Galileo named Armory. So if you're looking to beat the three to five shot, take a look at Armory. After that, uh, I struggle to think who could beat domestic spending if domestic spending is near his best, Matt. I guess we should talk about Zulu Alpha, who, who has done some big things in his career. Now eight years old for uh, trainer Mike Maker, we have to wonder if Zulu Alpha still has it though, Matt. Yeah, Brian, uh, uh, now eight years old. Certainly we have to emphasize that. He was the winner of the Pegasus World Cup turf in 2020 from trainer Michael Maker, who we know is uh, right now the leading trainer at the Saratoga meeting, who we know does great things, especially with his runners on the turf. Um, Zulu Alpha just came back and made his 2021 debut. And that was a fifth place finish in the Arlington Stakes, which was the local prep for this one. Hard to know what to expect now that he's eight. Yeah, that's, that's my problem. And I don't always uh, poo-poo a horse just because they're getting advanced in age. Hey, we were talking about John Henry earlier after all. But Zula Alpha, I mean, you just see since he got good, a lot of good races, whether he was winning or whether he was losing, he was running a lot of very good races, consistent horse. And this one race this year, he's only had one race this year. It just was not good, frankly. That fifth place finish in the Arlington Handicap was worse than just saying it was a fifth place finish in the Arlington Handicap. He beat horses that he would used to beat. I mean, he, he lost the horses that he would used to beat, and he was never really involved. So... He needs to bounce back. It's certainly possible. Maker's hot. Louis Saez is hot. Zula Alpha maybe just needed that one start, but I worry about how bad that one race this year was. Uh, another horse I think we should talk about for sure, Matt, is Busy Channel, a son of English Channel. In fact, there's a couple sons of English Channel in here who have been running against each other, the other one being two Emmys. Two Emmys has run three straight good second-place finishes, but in the last two, it was Busy Channel who beat him. Right, we've got the top three finishers from that Arlington handicap that we were talking about when we were discussing uh, Zulu Alpha and uh, um, in in this in this field. Yeah, the top two finishers, and I think Busy Channel is better than ever. Uh, maybe two Emmys has gotten better than ever, but Busy Channel's beaten him in his last two. He's he's got some speed, as does two Emmys. There's not a lot of speed in here. Uh, maybe that's something that could give hope to, to slowing down domestic spending a little bit, a, a lack of pace, but Busy Channel and two Emmys are our two horses that could be out there. A uh, long shot I wanted to mention, Matt, is Big Dreaming, because I think the Declaration of War horse was getting pretty good uh, last year as a three-year-old, and then it took him a few races to get going this year, but I like his last win. Maybe he's the long shot that I throw in at the bottom of my exotics. Anybody else you want to mention in here, Matt? Um, yeah, and you know, there's a, a, another European space traveler uh, coming over. He's going to run under the name of uh, Brendan Walsh, uh, was first in a stakes race uh, at York in June. I don't think he's close to the quality of uh, Armory, however. Yeah, he does have some class. He does have some class, but he really looks like a miler over there. And for sure, he's been a miler in his career and uh, much more inconsistent than Armory. Armory's been a consistent runner, uh, especially at the 10 for a long distance. So Space Traveler, hey, maybe if he can stretch out, he, he can run a big race, but uh, really kind of looks like the top two, doesn't it, Matt? I think so, Brian. Yeah, and, and if we go to the next race, the next big one, which is, of course, the Beverly D. This is the one that we at least have the same name on this final year, the Beverly D, named after Duchess Swa's wife. Uh, mile three sixteenths, 400,000. A lot of champions have won this race, Matt. But again, once again, just like the Mr. D, I'm looking at the top two and wondering, well, who's going who's gonna to stop either Mean Mary or Santa Barbara in this Beverly D? 
yeah, again, we've got a top two, and then we've got a we've got three or four horses in rounding out the field that took part in the local uh, prep for this, uh, the modesty stakes, right, Brian? We got Mean Mary for Graham Motion, two races this year, two wins, seven wins out of 11 starts in her career. And, and she's mean, Brian, when she's on the lead, speed is her, is her weapon. She gets on the lead. She's tough to beat. And this year she's done it in the grade three Galleret at Pimlico and in the grade two New York. Oh, absolutely, Matt. This, this daughter of Scott Daddy has been a uh, wonderful turf horse now for, for a little while. She got really good, of course, early last year. You look at her turf record, Matt. Uh, she's run 10 times on the grass. She's won seven. She finished second twice, so seven wins, two seconds out of ten starts. The only the only time she wasn't first or second, she was beaten two and a half lengths in the Breeders' Cup Philly and Mare Turf last year. So two and a half length loss is her one bad race on the grass. Like you say, she's got speed and she doesn't like other horses to pass her, and I, I think that's going to be tough in another race. At least it looks to me on paper doesn't have a lot of speed in it, so that. That's an advantage for me, Mary. I also like the fact that she is a horse who is willing to uh, do a little battle. She's not a horse who just gets out there and hopes she holds on. She can do battle. She's won a couple of tough races already. Uh, so she's coming in from that win at Belmont Park in the New York Handicap. I expect her with Louis Saez, trained by Graham Motion, a trainer I have a ton of respect for, to be a slight favorite. But then you look at the other side of the coin, the, the filly from the other continent. She's three. She likes to rally a little bit. So very different than me and Mary. But Santa Barbara was most impressive in winning that Belmont Oaks. She really was, Brian. She was most impressive. If we remember that race, uh, the, the New York riders were doing their best to keep Santa Barbara hemmed in and stuck in traffic coming down the stretch. And, and, and they had her hemmed in for a long, long time. But eventually, uh, uh, she got an opening. And when she did, uh, what a turn, what a turn of foot she displayed and burst through to get the victory. You had to be impressed with that poise and performance from this Aiden O'Brien runner. Yeah, Aiden O'Brien, Ryan Moore, again, just like we were talking about with Armory in the Mr. D. Here, the, here they are again. And uh, yeah, Santa Barbara, I agree with everything you said, Matt. She overcame trouble to win that Belmont Oaks. And and not for nothing, the horse that she ran down late, Con Lima, has basically been tearing it up in every other three-year-old filly turf race. Having said that, she's a three-year-old filly. Mean Mary is a big old five-year-old mare who, who is physically imposing. So Santa Barbara will be moving up in class. But of course, in Europe, in her lightly race career, she ran with uh, some really good fillies over there. In fact, they have a common opponent in Thunder and Nights who Mean Mary just barely beat over in America. And Santa Barbara just barely lost to an older mare in the pretty poly in Ireland. Santa Barbara looks like the real deal to me. Three-year-old rallier, five-year-old speed horse should be very interesting between the top two, Matt. But then I struggle. Who else? Well, we, we talked about Aiden O'Brien a little bit. Uh, he's actually won three consecutive runnings of the Arlington Million now, Mr. D. He's won four consecutive runnings of the Beverly D, Matt. That's pretty incredible. He's going for five in a row. And he's doing it this year with Lamista. Yes, with Lamista, uh, who um, you know isn't off to the uh, the kind of start we usually expect uh, from Chad Brown. Uh, ran second in the Bow Gang, and quite frankly, I expected a lot more of this horse in the Diana, and uh, uh, she produced a disappointing eighth place finish. Yeah, she was eighth of eight, Matt. She was dead last in the Diana. You know, she was beaten about eighth length, so it wasn't like she was distance or anything, but a disappointing uh, performance in that grade one Diana last time after a good effort uh, in her first start in America. She had a winning streak in Europe last year, but when she faced the best competition to, to finish last year, she didn't do so well either. So it remains to be seen if La Mista if that was kind of a fluky bad race in the Diana, or if she can really be a top American runner, I have my doubts after the Diana 
One Philly I really don't have too many doubts, though, about is Naval Laughter, Matt. She's only had four lifetime starts. She's only won once on turf, for crying out loud. But I think this daughter of midshipman is very talented. Uh, she broke her maiden after a super long layoff. She had about a year and a half off between her first and her second start. She broke her maiden at Arlington Park on their poly track service by nearly 20 lengths. Two starts later in her turf debut, she came back to win the modesty. Yeah, I, like we said, so she was an impressive winner of the modesty, which is the uh, uh, the local prep for this Beverly D. So uh, that, that's a noteworthy performance. A noteworthy performance in her turf debut and only her fourth lifetime start. I think Naval Laughter is a horse I'm really looking forward to watching uh, as she develops here. Uh, she'll be ridden by Sophie Doyle as she was in the modesty win, Matt. However, this is a serious step up in class when you're talking about me and Mary in Santa Barbara. So she's kind of my third horse in here. The horse that was rallying pretty well behind her, uh, she's an Argentinian bred, uh, Joy Epiphora. Uh, she will be uh, also in here and probably the fifth choice off that good performance in the modesty. But again, Matt, I just come back to these top two as I did in the Mr. D. So it's time. It's time to make our picks for these big races at Arlington Park, our finale show for Arlington Park. Uh, I hate to say that, Matt. But anyway, Mr. D, who's your pick? Who's your second pick? Mr. D, I can't uh, get away from him. My top pick is going to be domestic spending. And my second pick is armory. Yeah, Matt, Matt is not afraid to pick a winner, even if it's the favorite. He, he throws in his long shots when he wants, when he really likes someone. But Matt, uh, Matt knows sometimes it's, it's just the right time to bet a favorite. And, and of course, I respect that. But on the other hand, if I can see any reason to beat a three to five shot, I'm going to try to do it. And I do see some reason in here, maybe the lack of pace. Uh, but I really think Armory is a nice horse. I think Armory is a class horse. And, I, and, and for the last, I don't know, 30, 40 years, I felt like European turf horses have the advantage of American turf horses. Long story short, I'm going to take a shot on Armory. Nine to two on the morning line. I have him listed at four to one. I, I think he's the only horse that can legitimately beat domestic spending if domestic spending runs a good race. So I'm going to pick Armory to do it. I'm going to pick him to win. Uh, I have domestic spending. <laughs> Uh, in second, uh, Busy Channel is probably the horse I like third best. Not a lot of odds there, but I'm going to try to beat the heavy favorite in the Mr. D probably at my own undoing. Matt, Beverly D, who's your pick in there? Beverly D, I am going to go the other way, Brian. I'm going with the European on top. I was so impressed with that performance by Santa Barbara overcoming that trouble uh, at Belmont Park. I think uh, this is an extremely talented three-year-old. Yes, I know it's a, it's a tough ask beating an older um, mayor like Bean Mary, but I've said it before, you can't keep winning every single race. So I'm going to take a shot with Santa Barbara to beat Mean Mary. Mean Mary is my second choice. Yeah, well, you did say domestic spending was going to keep his winning streak going. So, hey, no, I, I, I totally get it, Matt. Santa Barbara is a serious three-year-old filly. Maybe she's the best three-year-old turf horse we've seen run on American turf this year that, I, that I'm talking about, male or female. She looked that good in the Belmont Oaks. And for me, this race is almost a 50-50 toss-up. The, the, the bottom line for me Maybe there's a little bit of sentiment because I, I find Mean Mary very easy to root for. Uh, Graham Motion, uh, Miss Philly, so tough on the lead, and she's kind of come out of nowhere the last two years. But for me, the one difference was the speed. I, I think they'll be bet pretty similarly. Mean Mary, probably a slight favorite. But the fact that she is speed in a race without hardly any other speed, I think Santa Barbara's going to have a lot of work to do in the stretch because I think Mean Mary is just going to be waiting to accelerate again after setting the pace. So for me, I'm going the other way. We have two exact boxes here, Matt, but unfortunately it's chalky, chalky, chalky. I'm going Mean Mary on top of Santa Barbara. 
Matt, we got a big show coming up next week. Uh, we get away from the sadness of Arlington Park closing because we're going to go coast to coast with big races, the Pacific Classic and the Alabama. We have that to look forward to. The Travers is just two weeks away here on Horse Center. But for now, let's get a parting shot from you, my friend. Absolutely, Brian. Uh, let's thank our Arlington Park for all of the great races. Let's let's thank the Dechessois family for uh, uh, all the great racing that they've uh, helped put on in Chicago. And of course, I want to thank our producer, Tony Bada-Bing, for putting together the show. Yeah, I, I, I went to Arlington, the old Arlington as a kid. And of course, I went to the... Uh, the rebuilt uh, uh, palace that is Arlington International Racecourse after it was rebuilt in the mid 80s, after the fire, uh, the Miracle Million. Uh, it, it's just been a great ride for me. I have so many good memories of Arlington. So sad to see it go, but uh, I guess it's time to say goodbye. Thank you folks for watching every week. Hey, if you haven't yet subscribed to our YouTube channel on Horse Racing Nation, do so now. It definitely helps Matt and I out. You can turn on those notifications so you never miss another show. Got to thank our sponsor, Matt, the best contest site out there. That's Derby Wars. Thanks to Candace Curtis for uh, the race graphics. And of course, my friend, Tony Bada-Bing for putting together the show. Most of all, I want to thank you folks for watching each and every week. We sure do appreciate it. We'll be back right here next week with another great edition of Horse Center. See you then.